In 1934, at the Marion Hotel, which is where the Marriott Hotel is now, is where a group of municipal officials had their first formative uh, meeting for the Municipal League. And so here we are 80 years later and we're back to the same spot. From the first convention at the Marion Hotel to our current headquarters on 2nd Street, the Arkansas Municipal League has seen its fair share of changes over the years. But it's only when you turn to look back and see how far you've been do you really get a sense of who you are. After 80 years of hard work and dedication to the well-being of our cities and towns, the League can look back with pride and know that we are an integral part of the cities and towns' successes in Arkansas. We've had major successes, like Act 165 of 1969, the League's successful attempt to overturn an Arkansas Supreme Court decision to abolish the common law tort immunity for municipalities and tort immunity was restored by statute for the cities and towns of Arkansas as well as other local government entities such as the school districts and the uh, counties. And it has, that act has literally saved Arkansas taxpayers millions and millions of dollars. In 1974, Glenn Zimmerman passed away, leaving behind a legacy of dedicated service. His son, Don, competed for the job and was selected as executive director of the league. The league hit several more milestones, like Amendment 56 in 1976. At the time, Arkansas mayors and city officials were the lowest paid in the nation. Amendment 56 changed this. At that time, the governor's cap was $10,000. Uh, municipal officials were limited to $5,000 as their annual compensation. So uh, this, this proposed constitutional amendment was submitted. The, the League uh, was very active in making sure the municipal section was included and, uh, and worked on the campaign to help pass that. And, and the voters responded at the general election in, in uh, 1976 to pass Amendment uh, 56 by an overwhelming majority and modernize our Constitution where our uh, municipal officials and state officials could be paid reasonable compensation. Another major milestone was the Local Option Sales Tax Authority in 1981. With this, cities and towns could propose to their voters a local sales tax option that would fund more municipal services. This just really changed the way Arkansas has developed. And it gave all of the cities the ability to, to do what their citizens wanted to do in the way of local improvements and the cumulative effect of that, of those improvements that have that were started taking place in, in 81 and shortly thereafter after the legislature granted this authority has been tremendous on the economy of Arkansas. The League's history is more than the headlines we make. Our history is ultimately made up of hardworking municipal officials who are dedicated to serving the citizens of their hometowns. There have been many successes along the way, and there were some hard battles that were fought. But throughout it all, the desire to serve our cities and towns has never wavered. Today, we stand proudly, 80 years strong. Since its formation, the League has assisted municipalities around the state with several different programs. Many of you learned of our rich history and our many achievements at the 75th anniversary celebration, but a lot has happened in the last five years. Since then, cities and towns across our state have seen the fruits of our many programs, making a positive impact on their citizens' day-to-day -day lives. With many city properties and vehicles being over-insured, under-insured, or even uninsured, the Municipal Property and Vehicle Programs stepped in to alleviate this burden for many cities and towns. Currently, these programs provide coverage to over 18,000 vehicles and 6,000 municipally owned properties throughout the state. Special attention is given to each member of these programs in the form of offering a speedy claims process. Recently, a valuation service was added to the Municipal Property Program. The valuation program was started in September 2012 at the request of the City of Moorfield where we completed survey on the City Hall and a volunteer fire department. 
The Arkansas Municipal League Municipal Property Program allows us to budget more wisely as an added benefit of its service, and it also allows us to keep our audit of our property more up to date. Asking the right questions when we're on site becomes key. Oftentimes, they may not have considered a certain piece of property. There may be a city park that hasn't been considered. Certain other buildings may not have been considered. But it was learning where all the property was, what condition it was in, and how we did have it value so that we could value it in the future at an appropriate level. Lobbying on behalf of cities and towns across the state is a large portion of what the League does. Home rule is a result of the League's effective lobbying of the state legislature. As you know, home rule was put in place to allow municipalities more local control. In recent years, strategic legislation was introduced to extend home rule to all municipalities and is now law. A great example of home rule can be found in the city of El Dorado. The city is known in and outside of the state for its unique and historic downtown. Their downtown public-private partnership with El Dorado festivals and events is a result of the city's effective use of home rule. The partnership allows for the refinement of buildings and sidewalks using investments from both public and private sectors and could not have been possible without the flexibility that home rule has given municipal officials. The sidewalks downtown were a problem. We've had trees that's been planted over the years. The sidewalks have just deteriorated. The city um, has been kind of avoiding that because there was always the issue who owned the sidewalks. Without the home rule benefit, we would have had to go in for special legislative uh, approval, uh, at least consideration, and we don't know where that would have headed uh, if we'd had to do that. And we know now that we legally own the sidewalks in the downtown area, so we're responsible for them. Therefore, we can spend public monies on them and get to where we need to go to have a beautiful downtown that welcomes everybody and it's a safe downtown. In 2012, Arkansas voters approved a constitutional amendment that increased the state sales tax for 10 years to fund highway improvements. On a permanent basis, one cent per gallon of the state motor fuel tax is now dedicated to the State Aid City Street Fund. With this, cities and towns are now able to improve the quality of their streets and have access to funds that were otherwise hard to come by for major street projects. We will give grants uh, to communities all over the state of Arkansas by using some of the revenue that comes from the sale of gas. In the committee, we have awarded 72 projects so far, and there's nine mayors on that committee. And out of those nine mayors, all of them deal with the same issues that the mayors who request the grant deal with, and those are street issues. And so we have about $20 million a year that we can disperse out to the cities in Arkansas. Well, with our streets deteriorating, and us not have, having the money or the funding to, to relay them, you know, we, we would, but we would, right to the point where we're fixing our potholes in the streets of Aubrey. Four-inch overlay was important because uh, the trucks are so heavy coming off the farm. Uh, Two-inch overlay would probably last five to seven years. The four-inch overlay will probably double that, maybe triple the length of time that it will uh, hold up those trucks. The appearance of the streets is one of the biggest thing, in my opinion, it helped because we had some streets that looked pretty rough. We took funding from the, from the town of Aubrey, funding from the donation that the Granger gave us, and the funding from the state aid. Without this street aid funding, the city of Aubrey could not have ever done it. I've been mayor for almost 34 years, and that was the easiest funding I have ever received. And it makes a difference in this community like it does in every community in Arkansas. To keep city officials informed of various laws and practices, the League put together the Voluntary Certified Continuing Education Program. Thus far, over a thousand municipal officials have participated in this program. Of the 231 graduates, the small town of Earl is tied for second for having the most certified municipal officials. I guess I would have to say here, I'm blessed in here, Earl are blessed because most of our councilmen, they are very much concerned about uh, certification, knowing the process of government, and due to the fact that government changed so often every year due to legislation. Uh, with the certification, it made our uh, budgeting process much easier. You know, you think that you can change the world, but 
Going to these classes let us know that, you know, it's a process. You know, you have to follow the rules and less, uh, uh, regulations of the law. Things that we, we didn't know since we got certified and we do know, now it makes us much better for us and easier, of course. The Municipal League is there for us, but we had to take the initiative to join these different classes. It makes me very proud that we uh, have done what we've done. The number one occupational hazard for municipal employees is automobile crashes. Being recognized as a National Safety Council Defensive Driving Training Center, the League conducts on-site training across the state, having trained a total of 923 city employees to date. In Harrison alone, 53 city employees from the fire, water, street, sanitation, and parks and rec departments participated in the training plus another 14 officers trained on the league's driving simulator. Since then, the training has resulted in fewer accidents for city employees. If anything costs the city, it costs the citizens. And through the defensive driving program especially, um, it's cut down those costs and, and it's made our drivers safer. It's cut down the cost to the city and in lost time in uh, vehicle damage. Since the defensive driving program started, uh, we haven't had any accidents in 20 months, at fault accidents. And uh, I think it's uh, done a tremendous uh, service for the city of Harrison, uh, not only the employees in, in the city itself, but also for the citizens in the uh, reduction in the rate of accidents we've had. Healthcare is an extremely important issue, especially these days. The League made it a priority and is able to provide coverage to 394 municipal entities, 90% of which are cities and towns. Remarkably, the municipal health benefit fund rates have been basically flat for the last seven years. The uh, group health insurance program that the League had started in 1956 and uh, they administered a program that was underwritten by Washington National Insurance Company that provided group health insurance for city employees. The Municipal Health Benefit Fund is a five-member board. We also have a medical and prescription drug coverage advisor. Don Zimmerman is the plan administrator. For the past two years, we have worked very hard to meet all the requirements of the Affordable Care Act. Forest City and was the first city into the program and Stuttgart was the second and those two cities are still in the uh, Municipal Health Benefit Fund that the League operates today. Filing workers' compensation claims can be stressful for those involved. The League has taken major steps toward alleviating that stress by offering an online claim service. The strength of the Municipal League Workers' Compensation Trust is evident today as more than 35,000 lives are covered by this program across the state. The Arkansas Municipal League Workers' Compensation Trust serves 491 members of our 500 cities and towns in the state of Arkansas. The Municipal League is constantly striving to improve our services and provide better access for all the members for in our case, workers' comp, claims that have to be filed. We have a 97% rating on timely filing of our claims. I don't know of any other industry, quite frankly, who handles claim services like we do, who can boast that. As our world and the way we communicate evolves each day, there's pressure to keep up with the changing times. From redesigning our website, to social media outreach, to the distribution of listserv messages, the League has made it a priority to stay well informed and to keep our members armed with information to better do their jobs across the state. The League's communication strategy is both digital and print. If we can't communicate to our members, then we're basically helpless. We have to be able to get that information out to our members in a timely manner. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all these programs are out there to be able to communicate with our uh, citizens. They're also a good way to communicate with each other. Our microsite, Great Cities Make Us Great State, if you haven't used that, get out there and get that and get it done because there is invaluable information there. We also now have uh, available mobile uh, phone apps for our smartphones. These mobile apps will allow us to have the, the agendas, have information about different uh, breakout sessions. Over a thousand municipal officials are currently on our list serves. If you have a problem in your city, it's really easy to put that out in a question too, and it goes all over the state. 
and you can almost immediately get back answers from different parts of the state from what they have what they've done that worked and what they've done that hasn't worked it's a it's a real real powerful tool for our city officials to be able to have a source that you can go to that you can look up things no matter what your your issue might be the Arkansas Municipal League handbook is that go-to source. All the rules and regulations for how a city and town operates in the state of Arkansas is contained in that handbook. The uh, other things that uh, highlight that are done in City and Town Magazine. Good articles that are each month in there, different things on planning, on zoning, and the better informed you are, the better job you're gonna do, the better city you're gonna have. Great cities make a great state. The Municipal Legal Defense Program was created to legally protect municipalities and their officials, along with their employees. After a 1978 Supreme Court ruling, municipalities, officials, and city employees were exposed to litigation. Many of those municipalities, officials, and city employees couldn't financially handle the burden. Thus, the Municipal Legal Defense Program was born. We're just a byproduct of cities. Cities, towns join this program, but they created it and they run it. So we really work directly for those folks, uh, those members. We work for the police officers that are protected by the program. And I think that creates a really unique relationship for us. It gives us a grand opportunity to step out and do the right thing for municipal government. And I think it makes for better police departments, better fire departments, better cities in general. In 2004, what started as a routine pullover turned into a high-speed chase between a reckless driver and West Memphis police. The chase ended across state lines, where the officers were called upon to use deadly force to stop the driver from potentially harming the officers and other drivers. Chases are, at that time, were relatively common in the West Memphis Police Department, but no matter how many times you've done it, it's still nerve-wracking. Um, your heart's going a million miles an hour. Everything's happening so fast. This case uh, really solidified my feeling toward the Legal Defense Fund in as much as this case was a case that wasn't routinely covered by their regulation since it occurred in two different states. We litigated um, those cases in federal court for a while. We lost our arguments in front of the federal district judge in Tennessee, so we appealed up to Cincinnati, which is the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. The Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals found the officers had violated the Constitution. Uh, we were left with only one option, and that was to petition for writ of certiorari to the United States Supreme Court. Well, we really didn't anticipate that we would be before the U.S. Supreme Court with one of our cases, uh, but uh, you know, most of the actions that we deal with are in, in federal court. I guess that was always a possibility. This year, the U United States Supreme Court, of all the petitions submitted to it, took only 70 cases. So we very, feel very fortunate that our case was accepted, considered, and then the, the outcome, we're, we're very happy with the outcome. A unanimous decision by the United States Supreme Court is an incredible thing because it gives police officers and mayors and council members a definitive understanding of what the law is in these circumstances. Well, as far as whether a city should join or not, the question to me really isn't why would you, it's why wouldn't you. Um, they've represented me through several lawsuits over my career and the quality of the representation has been uniformly excellent. Uh, Mike Mosley and all the other attorneys that have worked on the cases have done a great job. They've kept us informed every step of the way and the, the quality of the representation I have cannot find flaw with at all. All the Municipal League programs are very valuable to the city. Um, I feel that the Municipal League is there to support us at, at all turns. Mark, along with the, the, the colleagues at the Municipal League, has been a really good teaching inspiration to us. They understand municipality uniquenesses. They already know uh, much of what is possible and not possible. What the Arkansas Municipal League does for Arkansas cities is serve as an invaluable partner. I can go on and on and on about the products and the services that the league staff provide. And without the, the quality individuals that we, we have, 
those services could not be provided as they are. But Arkansas is blessed, and I hear this from my colleagues around the country, with the quality of our local officials. They're just good, common sense people who are wanting to solve problems and do things for the good of their cities and towns. A lot has changed since our humble beginnings 80 years ago, but the mission of the Arkansas Municipal League remains strong. It's our job to provide peace of mind to our city officials so that they can better serve their citizens. There's no telling what the next 80 years will bring, but knowing where we've come from and our many successes, there's nothing our cities and towns can't handle. After all, great cities make a great state.